Okay, welcome back. In the last video, I showed you how to create a very simple Verilog module that described a simple structural circuit. So here is the circuit that we had described using Verilog. Now we went, in the last video, we went, described the circuit and went through the process of synthesis. After synthesis, we want to make sure that the design works as we had intended it to. So this video will show you how to use uh, simulation, create a test bench, and do a simulation on the on the Verilog module that we've just created. Okay, in order to create a simulation source, okay, so in your Vivado project on the same uh, project, go to Add Sources. Last time we did create design source. This time we're going to do create simulation source. So select simulation source. Hit next. Now we don't have a simulation source already created. So we'll click on this plus sign here. Create file. I like to name my simulation source since they're called test benches. That's the official name. Uh, I like to say TB and then the name of the Verilog module. I'm simulating and the name of the Verilog module was called MyCirc. So I created a file name called tb underscore mycirc uh, dot v oops dot v and keep it local to your project. Uh, <coughs> okay. So we have the file. Now you can hit finish. Now it says what are the inputs and outputs for the simulation source? Now really for a simulation source we don't have specific inputs and outputs like the one like the way we had for our real module simulation is about energizing these inputs of the real module and observing the output y okay so our verilog test bench module for a simulation source does not have inputs and outputs okay you can think of the inputs as being things from let's say switches or uh, function generator in lab and the output being something you're observing on the oscilloscope. Okay, so the test bent module which is going to energize my circuit does not need its own independent input and output. So we'll skip this. It says, are you sure you wanted to use these values? Yes. So we should be seeing a simulation source right here called test bench my circ. So let's open that. It created a module which is fairly empty right now <clears throat> has no inputs and outputs okay now in when we do the simulation we we'll go through a few things and here's an example all right so here is a file available on blackboard called an anatomy of test bench for a test bench that's the name of the module we have no input output okay uh, the inputs of the main source are declared as registers these are declared as registers because we want to hold the value at the inputs until we change it. The outputs are declared as wires. If anything changes, we want to observe that right away. So we don't want to hold on to the old value. We want the output to change as soon as something changes. So those are declared as wires. Okay. So in our module here on the test bench, we're going to declare, declare the inputs of the original module as reg okay so we're going to declare reg a reg b reg c and reg d those were the four a b c and d were the four inputs in the previous module that we want to test uh, we want to declare our output as a wire so we have wire the output was called a y so we have y okay. all right so now what we want to do is call instantiating the module instantiating a module if you if you want to think about it in terms of programming uh, c programming or java programming instantiating a module is somewhat similar to what you would do when you call a function that you've created in uh, programming software programming right so instantiating a module is basically putting the module together actually we've done this this is instantiating the and module 
from an internal library. Okay. In our case, we're going to instantiate the module here. Our module name, so when you instantiate the module, you have our module name. My module name is called my circ. Right? Just like how we instantiated the AND gate, now we're instantiating this guy, my circ. Okay. What do we expect? We expect the output first because that's how we had initially created this with the output first. So you can say y comma. Next we expect the input that's on a, so a, b, c, d, a, b, c, d. Okay. That's how you instantiate the module. So, oh, I forgot to give the module a name, which was, that was the name of the module. And this is what we call AND gate on our schematic. Similarly, we will call our a unit let's say unit under test uut okay you can call it whatever name you want it's a unique name given to that module so my circ is the name of the module that's the name of the module on the schematic i guess and that's the ordering of the input and output that we have <coughs> okay so module instantiation so okay now we want to we want to exercise we want to exercise the inputs and outputs and observe inputs to this module and observe what happens so right so let's add the stimulus and to add the stimulus we'll use the phrase initial begin begin and ends are like curly braces in other programming so we'll let's call a equals zero b equals zero c equals zero and d equals zero and then we'll let these inputs stay like these for 100 nanoseconds that's what that means okay. after that let's say we want to change all of this so we have applied zero 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 let's apply zero 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 one uh, 0010 1 and we could keep going like this until we if it's a small circuit we can exercise in this case there's only 16 possibilities we could exercise all 16 possibilities if it's a larger circuit we can exercise only we could exercise just a subset Let's say, for example, A equals 1, B equals 0, C equals 1, and D equals 1 for 100 nanoseconds as well. So once the test bench, so we've created the stimulus, and these are the inputs assigned to A, B, C, D, values assigned to inputs A, B, C, D, and they should result in an output on Y. So once we're done, hit save. So save this, right? As soon as you save this, now no, notice under sim1, what happened? The test bench, my circ, since it instantiated this particular module we had created and called it UUT, showed up as UUT, and it's linked to that bear log file. Okay. All right. Now, let's hit run simulation. We want to do a behavioral simulation. So let's do a behavioral simulation. It's executing the analysis. This might take uh, a little bit of time depending on how large your test bench is and how big the circuit is. So give it a second. And here you go. So it's completed. It has completed the simulation process. So let's go take a look at the results that we got. Right here on the waveform. This waveform, you might have to expand some of these windows a little bit. Uh, you don't see everything here. So right click on the window and say full view this will show you everything so let's take a look and if i and just like how you use dialing's isc this one has similar uh, cursors you can place at different locations this yellow thing is a cursor if i place it right there at 49 nanosecond these are the values 0000, 0, 0, 0 and the output is 1 the next one 0000001 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, the output is a 0 now let's go back to and make sure that the circuit okay all right, here it is. Zero. So initial stimulus is zero, 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 zero. 
So 0 and 0 on A and B gives you a 0 on T1. A 0 on C gives you a 1 on T2. So 0 or 1, T3 is a 1. D was a 0, so T4 is a 0. So Y should be a 1. Is that what we see? For 0, 0, 0, up to Y is a 1. Now let's see what happens when 0, 0, 0, 1 is applied. So 0, 0, 0, 1 is applied. So everything else was 0, 0, 0 just as before. So T3 was a 1. 1 and 1 results in T4 being a 1, which changes Y to a 0. And that's what we see here. And you can verify that this waveform actually proves that the Verilog module we described here is doing the exact same functionality as the original schematic we came up with. Now this simulation step is crucial because it lets us gain confidence before we build larger modules using mystark.v.